Hey, this is Annie. And Samantha. And welcome to Stuff I've Never Told You, a production of iHeartRadio. Oh, mateys. Uh, yeah, I said the G-H, Annie. You know, are you oh, glad I, I began no. that way? So Samantha and I have a beef. Yeah, we do. I, I think it's R, just A-H-R, because my initials are A-H-R. And also it makes that joke rated R work. So Arr. your G-H and R-G doesn't work. Arr. It ruins the joke. <laughs> Everyone's like, well, today is not the day for this one. <laughs> They've clearly <laughs> lost it. <laughs> but yes, I did put it in there, so ha there. But if you've been listening to some of our recent episodes, I think you know we've been a little overexcited about all of the badassery of some of the most notorious women in history, whether they're change makers, soldiers, spies, assassins, or just altogether badass women. And we've decided we need to expand that to women pirates of history. Yes. So I do have a question for you, Annie. Oh, a pirate-related question? Yes. Because pirates have been pretty romanticized in general. Yeah. Do you have or a, either a fond memory of a pirate character or one that you love or have watched recently? <laughs> You're welcome. Oh, no. This is actually kind of embarrassing, but I suppose I'll admit it. So I was in high school when Pirates of the Caribbean came out. And this was the height of my emo phase, mm -hmm, which, mm -hmm. as many of you might know, involved Guy Liner. Of course. And Johnny Depp wore very epic Guy Liner in that movie. So I was a big fan of that. And I really didn't like Will Turner, Orlando Bloom's character. <laughs> but the reason this is so embarrassing, obviously for reasons now in our what's going on with him modernly, but also at the time I was in drama and I got in really big trouble once. I can't remember why, but I had to write this essay about my favorite actor and I wrote about him and I'm embarrassed to this day. <laughs> but it's just because I had a crush on him. <laughs> well, to be fair, you're not the only one. Johnny Depp took the hearts of many, especially like my generation when we saw him in What's Eating Gilbert Grape, big thing. Mm -hmm. Cry Baby was one of my favorite movies. So no shame, no shame in that. <laughs> but yes, of course, there's a lot of things, asterisks to his name today, but we won't yeah. mention that. Every time I think of pirates, unfortunately, this has everything to do with the fact that I was a daycare center worker mm -hmm. is the stupid Veggie Tales. <laughs> The veggie, the pirate yes. song, I am the pirate that doesn't do anything. I am a pirate that doesn't do anything. Oh, wow. Everybody's stuck this? in their head. I'm so I sorry. I absolutely don't. But I, you know, I've seen still images of Veggie Tales <laughs> and I remember pirates. Yes. <laughs> so I worked at a church, local church that had a daycare. And of course, this was one of the favorites of the children. And I, I really wanted, I hated it after the fact. Like there were moments of like, oh, that's cute. And then, yeah. oh, this is creepy. And then, why? It just became a why. But I also love like Peter Pan. Hook is probably one of my favorite movies growing up. Yeah. And I have memories of that. So yeah, I think like even though we don't see them today as much, maybe I'm wrong because I did fall out of love with like Pirates of the Caribbean. And we know they have a very long like sequel thing as well. Yeah. They have plenty of parts to it. Is there any recent pirate movies out? <laughs> um, I think there's been a recent... I know Margot Robbie's going to be in the next Pirates of the Caribbean. Um, so it's still going. Okay. Oh, yeah. And, and um, <laughs> obviously, as we're talking about this, listeners, you're probably picking up on, there aren't many female pirates uh, in our entertainment. But I know... I never saw it, but it was another Peter Pan adaption and Bruni Mara was a pirate mm -hmm. in that. <laughs> well, I told you about the Gina Davis you pirate did. movie with Matthew Modine. Oh, I don't uh, who know was from who Stranger that is. Things? Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. He was uh, the father figure in Stranger Things, the first season. That's Matthew Modine. He must not have made any impression on me at Apparently, all. Apparently, I think he's coming back for the newest season because he was such an epic bad guy. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> we have to get back to it. He was a big uh, 80s, 90s guy as well. Okay. But I remember Cutthroat Island specifically because she was the main character as the pirate. And we didn't see too many. And apparently some of the women that we are going to talk about did have their mo own movies. Mm. But we just, I don't think it had the acclaim that it could have. Right. Didn't become the cultural touchstone. Right. I bet that some of these we're going to talk about are going to be HBO series or something soon. They should be. They should be. 
Okay. So before we get into specific women, let's talk about history of the pirating world, a brief history. <laughs> a very brief, yes. Yes. The pirating world is much like most of our historical episodes in that, in a lot of ways, it's, it's very romanticized. And so we have a lot of tales that are splashed with legends and facts. So our info is a bag of, uh, like a grab bag of, that's what is said to have happened. Um, and it's really hard <laughs> to verify those things. Right. C- because there's a part, like when we were talking about with spies and assassins, there's a, the legend is a key part of it. You want to build this reputation right. as a pirate. And when we're talking about women in history, even less, unfortunately, has been recorded. But the legends and tales do go on, and we would be remiss if we didn't uh, share those with you, share all that we know about them. (laughs) Or the small things we know about them. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, so let's do a definition, because we love definitions, of piracy, which, according to the Guinness World Records, is the act of attempting to board a ship with intent to commit theft or any other crimes with the apparent intentions to use force to achieve that end. Very nice little uh, definition. Also, <laughs> like one says to be a pirate. World records. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, I had a specific thing because I wanted to know about the early histories and the, the likelihood of pirates existed when, like, the beginning of the existence of boats. Mm-hmm. The first recorded pirates, according to the Guinness World Book of Records, <laughs> date back to the 14th century BCE. And according to the Egyptian records, it was when the Lucan pirates raided Cyprus in the Eastern Mediterranean. Of course, some of the most notable tales come from the period of the Golden Age of Piracy, which makes sense. The Golden Age was dated to be around the 17th and early 18th centuries. There were thousands of pirates roaming the the seas at that time, and some of the most famous pirates of all time, including Blackbeard and the captain, William Kidd, were roaming the seas during this period as well. Right, but we're not talking about them. Of course not. We are talking about the famed women of the sea. And the list was bigger than I thought, so we decided to pick a handful and dig a bit deeper in their individual stories. So, let's get started. So, let's start with Saida Alhera. Her name translated to lady who is free and independent. I like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Saida was born in 1485 and was a part of a prominent Muslim family. After fleeing Morocco, when Christian invaders Ferdinand and Isabella conquered her land, she allied herself to Turkish pirate Barbarossa of Algiers. And she was a very savvy leader and proved herself as her husband's vice governor of Tetuan. After her husband's death, um, and he, he was the governor of Tetuan, she was accepted by the community as the ruler. She also accepted a marriage proposal by the Sultan of the Moroccan Wadisid dynasty and became queen, but it was said she would not travel to him to be married. So he had to make his way to her. I like that too. Right. And some believe she did this as a sign of refusal to give up governing Tetuan. Of course, this leads up to her being the last pirate queen. Her desire for vengeance pushed her to connect with Pirate Barbarossa of Algiers, yes, which helped her to acquire a lot of booty as a pirate herself. But it wasn't just that she pillaged and plundered, but that she was well-respected as queen of the Mediterranean and helped organize and negotiate the release of Christian captives and Spanish and Portuguese captives. And though she was pretty successful both on the sea and ruling the Tetuan, she was overthrown by her own son-in-law, in 1542. Not much is known about her after that time, but some say she accepted her defeat and retired to Chef Shawin until her death. Right. And next we have another queen for our famous pirate, Queen Tetua of Illyria, who was one of the earliest recorded women pirates ever. She became queen regent in 231 BC after the death of her husband Agron due to his heir still being an infant. And she continued her rule following her husband's expansion policy for their kingdom. And to do this, she used her forces to use piracy to dominate Illyria's enemies and caused quite a stir from the Roman Empire. She was known for her fierce stance against any and all ships and ordered her crews to treat all ships as enemy ships, so they were not kind. And under her reign, her pirates dominated the Adriatic Sea, quote, terrorizing the trade route of Greece and Italy. She was able to attain quite a bit of wealth as well as power. Eventually, the Romans had to intervene as many tradesmen and voyagers complained of the continued siege and sent ambassadors for a diplomatic meeting. (laughs) This didn't end so well, as some of the ambassadors were killed and several were imprisoned, which ended up starting a war between Rome and Illyria that lasted from 229 
229 BC to 227 BC. Queen Tetua was eventually forced to surrender. Of course, again, not much is known after her surrender, but it is said that she lived several decades out. But there's another version of which it states that she threw herself off the cliffs of Razan, present-day Montenegro, rather than surrender to the Romans. I like that version. It just seems really, like, tragic. <laughs> <laughs> a Roman I tragedy like right it here. It's just like a tragic. Roman tragedy. It's like a Roman <laughs> tragedy made to happen. I mean, come on. <laughs> come on. <laughs> well, we have some more very exciting, possibly tragic, <laughs> women to cover. <laughs> but first, we're going to pause for a quick break for a word from our sponsor. And we're back. Thank you, sponsor. And next, we are talking about a pirate queen or perhaps chieftain, uh, but this time from Ireland, Grace O'Malley, or I'm going to attempt Gaelic name here, Gronya Ni Moya. I hope I got something close <laughs> to what it is. <laughs> she was born in County Mayo around 1530 to the elected chieftain Dudara O'Malley of Umhall Kingdom. She had grown up on the sea as her family was a seafaring family. When she was told that she couldn't join her father on his expeditions due to her long hair, that it would get caught up in the ropes or something on the ship, she cut it off and <laughs> demanded to be allowed to join. And she was allowed. She eventually married to Donald O'Flaherty, the heir of another chieftain, and they had three children together. When her husband was murdered by a rival clan, she took over her husband's ships and his land. And with the loyalty of some of her husband's men, she took to the sea and began her pirating career. <laughs> Just imagining that conversation with your parents. Like, what do you do? Oh, I'm a pirate. Uh, <laughs> they're uh, proud. They're I'm sure. Her. Yeah, I bet. She was a fierce pirate and was not hesitant in getting revenge and vengeance against her enemies. That also sounds like a common theme throughout these stories. Uh, and even immediately after giving birth to her son, Tibbet, she rallied her crew to fight against their enemies. Though she had many run-ins and close calls, including being captured and imprisoned, she always returned back to the pirate world and even met with Queen Elizabeth I, who they were at the same age. The queen even released her back to, quote, maintenance by land and sea and allowed her to continue in, in her piracy and released her son, who had been captured. She was also named O'Malley, the chieftain of Mayo. She died in 1603, the same year as Queen Elizabeth, and her legacy is still told, obviously. We're talking about it right now and sung about. Yes. Um, and then we wanted to move on to Rachel Wall, who is an American and not so much royalty. Uh, but she was one of the few female pirates from America. And she was born Rachel Schmidt to her Presbyterian parents in Carlisle, Pennsylvania, in 1760. And she eventually moved to the waterfront around the age of 16 because she had fallen in love with the sea, obviously. Mm -hmm. She eventually married a fisherman named George Wall and they moved and settled down in Boston. But at one point, George leaves her when she decides that she becomes a maid to, uh, you know, live on her own and take care of herself. But then he returns and, quote, entices her to a life of a bad company, as she oh. wrote. <laughs> the couple began their pirating life in 1781 when they stole the vessel Essex off the New Hampshire coast. They disguised their ship to look like it had been damaged and would wait for passing ships. And when these ships would come up to rescue them, they would storm the other ships, and rob it. Uh, overall, they are said to have robbed at least 12 ships and possibly killed 24 sailors. So they were pretty fierce. However, that following year, George drowned in a storm and Rachel returned to Boston. There, she kind of continued her little bad ways, I guess, uh, to rob Doc's ship as well as she would get repeatedly arrested for theft. Um, eventually, she was arrested for highway robbery after stealing a woman's bonnet, and she was soon tried and convicted of her crimes and eventually hanged at the age of 29. Also of note, she was the last woman to be hanged in Boston. Wow. Yeah. She stole a woman's bonnet? That's how they yep. got her? Yep. <laughs> I mean, it's all very tragic and just not what I was expecting. Um, okay, uh, let's move on to one of the best nicknamed pirates back from the dead red, which is 
Excellent. Yes, I love it. Excellent. Also known as Jacquat du Laye. Du Laye was born in the 17th century, a daughter of a Frenchman and Haitian woman. Her mother died in childbirth and her father was murdered, which left her to care for her brother, who was said to have some type of brain damage and needing extra care. At a young age, she began her adventure and pirating. She earned her nickname because it is said that she had to fake her death to escape the government in the 1660s, at which time she pretended to be a man for several years. She came back after the heat died down. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, And that's how she got this, this wonderful nickname, Back from the Dead Red. Of course, red being a reference to her very noticeable hair color. At 26, she and her crew took over a Caribbean island, naming it the Freebooter Republic. And it is here she would meet her end. Uh, While defending the island, she was involved in a shootout that uh, ended her life. This is one of those um, entries who some argue that she may just be a legend and actually doesn't exist. But there are those who argue she had a child who also became a pirate and a fierce swordsman. You know, mystery's history, as I like to say. Yes. The story is great. The nickname is wonderful. I love the nickname so much. That's pretty much why she's in here. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, I'm not going to (laughs) lie. We had to, we had to. We do have a few more for you listeners, but first we have one more quick break for a word from our sponsor. Thank you, sponsor. And we're back with our next pirate, Ching Shi. And a quick shout out to listener Kelly, who brought her to our attention and sent us a copy of the poem written about her, which, by the way, we're going to do a little read for you. <laughs> so, Ching Shi was originally known with Shi Zingu, who married a notorious Chinese pirate, Zing Yi, or Ching Ai. Uh, his fleet, called the Red Fleet, made up of 300 ships and had up to possibly 40,000 men. Now, she, Ching Shi, was a prostitute in a brothel in Canton, where she met Yi and married him in 1801. After the death of her husband, Ching Shi, which means by the way, widow of Ching, so there you go, took control of the fleet with the help of her husband's adopted son, Ching Pao. And they continued their reign of power, growing the fleet, they say, to possibly 18,000 vessels and up to 80,000 crew members. To say the least, she was a fierce leader who was feared by the British, the Portuguese, and the Qing dynasty. And her crew was kept under her control. Uh, She definitely made sure that they followed her laws and rules. One of her rules including death by decapitation for the rape of female prisoners or ears being chopped off if uh, you were caught deserting. So don't do those. Apparently she had a pretty intensive list of things to follow and (laughs) they sure did. And she was so powerful, she became a huge problem for the Chinese government. As in fact, in order to stop her, they enlisted the help of the British and Portuguese navies to capture her. Of course, she being very savvy negotiator, was able to wrangle an agreement which she could surrender but would only kneel in reference to being married. So, because when you surrender, you're supposed to kneel in front of them, mm-hmm. whatever, whatnot, she decided, I'm not going to kneel for this. I'll kneel out of respect because you're going to marry me to my companion, who was the adopted son of her dead husband, Ching Pao. So, she then was able to get a pretty good deal and retire with all of her loot and a full pardon. So, she did pretty good. Yeah. So she died at the age of 69 in her sleep. But because she was the reason we wanted to talk about all these pirate women and adventures, uh, we wanted to do a dramatic reading of a poem that was actually the reference from our listener, Kelly, thank you, which is The Fragrant Maiden is China's Most Wanted, which was written in 2018 by K. Ming Chang. So if they ever hear this, I'm so sorry if we butchered it. <laughs> We're going to do our best. <laughs> <laughs> so... Fragrant maiden is China's most wanted. This country's least wanted, girls, and ghost gods, I wasn't born, I cannonballed. Out of my mother, I hollowed her breast into boats of China, my country, my sore, my loyal leash. You aren't the first to say you want me on my back. At the brothel I was born, most wanted, China's best whore. When the midwife I sirened, I lamped my bones and the boys mothed to me. Said woman, I've got to have you, have you like a river. I have no memory of being named. I flood anonymous, I rinse canton like my rice bowl that I am, I bark into a tree. 
You can't f- a country wants to be like a man wants his mother, a mouth to eat out of bullet hold breast, sprays a meadow with milk grows heads, a cabbage client's brothel mothers beat me with brooms, whip me with my own braid. I belt a sea song, I sack my body to steal it back, listen to my mast moan as it makes a wind to marry. I sail home to you, China, hear the shore shark with teeth and eat you out to sea. I stroke my sword, I finger comb your beach clean, I slut like the sea. I'm room enough for every man to drown inside me twice. China say you want me. I'll come with a fleet to father you. Oh, oh, yes. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming for you. So good. So good. And I really hope we did that justice because it was a beautiful poem. Yes. (laughs) And reading it is a little more difficult. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) It's been a long time since I've dipped into the world of poetry and I might be a bit rusty. (laughs) But yes, it's an excellent, excellent poem. We did want to include some honorable mentions for Anne, Bonnie, and Mary Reed. (laughs) Any of you who are familiar with the world of women and pirates, you're probably like, why didn't they talk about them? It's because Bridget and I did an episode a while back on women who dressed as men to get what they wanted. And we talked about them. And to this day, Bridget and I asked, like, who should play them in in an HBO adaption? And I still will randomly get tweets about who... And Tessa Thompson is almost always one of them. So, yes, you can check out that episode for more. But certainly they had fascinating... Uh, histories. Also, Sadie the Goat, who was an American pirate in the 19th century. Sadie Farrell got her nickname for her infamous style of mugging people in the streets of New York City by squarely headbutting them in the stomach like a goat. Uh, She and her crew pillaged up and down the Hudson and Harlem rivers. Right. And just to go back to Anne Bonnie and Mary Reed, although if you'll go back to listen, yeah, they were both part of the Calico Jack's crew. And they were known for their impressive fighting skills, outdoing some of their male counterparts. So they were pretty good. And they also were not hanged when the rest of the crew were because they were able to say that they were pregnant. And so they were able to kind of escape that fate. Although Mary Reed, I do believe, ended up dying in prison uh, nonetheless. But yeah, so there you go. Extra honorable mentions. (laughs) We always got to. (laughs) Right. We can never stop. (laughs) Yes, thanks so much to Kelly for sending us that poem and putting this on our radar. It was a fun one to dig into. And as always, listeners, we love getting suggestions from you. If you have any ideas of topics we should cover or any pirates we missed, please send them our way. Our email is stuffmediamomstuff at iheartmedia.com. You can also find us on Twitter at momstuffpodcast or on Instagram at stuff I've never told you. Thanks as always to our super producer, Christina. Thank you. And thanks to you for listening. Stuff I've Never Told You is a production of iHeartRadio. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows. 